Welcome back everybody to the New Wave Cooking Club. Chef David here from the New Wave Kitchen. Today we're gonna to do a really simple beef stew, beef bourguignon, which is just beef in burgundy wine. A Couple other things that are going in there. We're gonna cook it today in our six quart NutriPot pressure cooker. And one of the reasons I love this compared to all the other ones on the market, two things. Number one, I could set this pot right now while it's open to sear. It's gonna give the bottom of the pot really hot so I can brown the meat. The other thing I love about this compared to some other models, lid comes off very, very simply. Gives me a little more freedom to cook. So let's get started. We're gonna start with an onion, and then we're gonna add some garlic. We're also gonna render the fat off of some bacon. That's gonna give us the base for the flavor in the stew. So let's start with that. So an onion, very simply, we can slice it for a little more body. We can dice it so it's a little more refined, if you would. So let's do that. This is the fun part, cutting a vegetable. Hard part is talking. So this is just a simple white onion. You can use Spanish onion, uh, red onion. I think a little too sweet for this dish, but simple. So here, take a little butter, because I think we all can agree on butter for a stew. Good. And with the butter, I'm gonna add the onions and then a little bacon. So here's the onion. Already sizzling, that's why I really enjoy this, this particular electric pressure cooker, that sear function. All right, and then I'm gonna show you the pre-programming later for the actual meat setting on here that's gonna slowly stew this in a really short period of time. Normally at home and in the professional restaurants I've worked in over the last 30 years, beef bourguignon, wonderful dish to make, takes two, sometimes three hours in a professional kitchen. Electric pressure cooker, 40 minutes, we're gonna be eating some stew. So next up is gonna be the bacon. I've already cut some, but I want to show you something we call in the restaurant industry a lardon, which is just basically a half inch segment of the bacon. So when it renders and shrinks, we get these nice little textural crunches of bacon and we get all the fat and flavor in our stew. All right, so just very simply, again, quarter inch lardon. Now you can buy the really thick sliced bacon for this, or you can actually even buy slab bacon, which is actually much better for this. But I like to cut it. It's fun to show people how to cut it. So some bacon, just for fun. Let's get a little more in there because you can't have too much smoked bacon if you ask me. So that's that. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a carrot. So let me walk you through a couple of other ingredients. I have a little tomato paste. Tomato paste does two things. It has a little acid, obviously a tomato flavor, but it's also because it's thick, it's been reduced, it's gonna give a little body to the sauce. That's important. We have a beautiful top round here. You can use eye of round, you can use beef shoulder. So the wonderful thing about stews is that you can use less expensive cuts because they're gonna cook long and become tender. Traditionally, beef bourguignon, pearl onions. You know I put a little regular on there, but also we have to finish with a little cocktail pearl onions and some mushrooms. We're gonna finish off the dish. Beef stock, we make here in the kitchen. A little red wine, salt, freshly ground black pepper, and that's it. We're gonna hit this on our stew button for about 40 minutes, and we're gonna plate it up. It's gonna be wonderful. So the other thing I'm gonna add to this, and there's variations on beef bourguignon, some have celery, some have carrots, some don't. I like to put a little carrot in mine because it's healthy and I like to sneak carrots into my kids' uh, diet. So, very simple. This is just a local carrot they grabbed down at the farmer's market for us. And I like that. So we just peel it. And there's a couple different ways you can cut it. You don't have to get fancy. You can just cut this into simple coins, you know, for simple cooking, or you can get a little more refined. And I just want to show you just a couple of real fast tricks with that. Get rid of the peeler, and these will go right here. That's got to go in the compost, guys. Don't throw those in the garbage, okay? So look, real quick, if we wanted to slice coins, we could do that, okay? But if you want to make little squares, or if your recipe calls for dice carrots, show you real quick. It's round, so it rolls, and that can be dangerous with a sharp knife. It's actually our black ceramic knife is really sharp. I'm going to just flatten one end of it a little bit, okay? We save that. Now it doesn't roll. Now, depending on the size of the dice we need, you can kind of judge it. And then here, just trim the end a little bit. Then you can just stack these up very simply. Just get two stacks there. And then we'll make basically some batons or some stick. And then from there, we'll make our dice. And I'm trying to keep the carrots actually the same size as the onion and the bacon, just for consistency in the sauce. I want the beef to be large chunks, 
surrounded by kind of a delicate sauce with all the vegetables. You'll see how it looks. And then from here, just line them up and just very carefully. Now in the restaurant, hotels I've worked in, you have to be very concise with this. At home, I think we have a little license to play. So in go to carrots with the onions, really good quality smoked bacon lardons in there, a little bit of butter, and we're rendering off quite a bit of the fat from the bacon. This takes a minute, which is good. Because while this is rendering, what I want to do, now we have mushrooms, which I'm going to prep at the end. But here's the big part of this recipe. Here's a couple more ingredients. So we talked about tomato paste. I got some garlic cloves. Two things we can do with garlic clove. First thing we can do with this is I can add them whole. They're going to give off some garlic flavor. We can remove them later. Some people don't want a stronger taste of garlic. When you cut or smash garlic, it releases its own oil, gives you a stronger flavor. But if you put it in whole like this, the flavor will be a little more mild. The other thing you can do is very simply cut it up or chop it. And the easiest way to do that is to flatten it a little bit gently with your knife. And then just turn it. And we have a really quick mince of garlic. And I'm sure you see videos online all the time of chopping garlic. Sometimes you see them chopped with salt. Me, personally, I don't like that because I think the salt damages your knife. That simple. Okay, so garlic's in. Now I have here, this is called the bouquet garni. This is a few different herbs, parsley. We have fresh thyme, we have bay leaf, and this is just gonna go in, when I put my stock in, it's gonna gently flavor the broth. We'll get to that one in a minute. Right now the big one. We're gonna get this meat in, and what I wanna do with our meat is actually add a little bit of flour, toss it and coat it, so that as it's browning, it's gonna give off not only a better color, but it's also gonna help thicken the sauce at the end when I add the wine and I add the beef stock, okay? So it's actually very simple. You don't need a lot of flour. If you put too much, you'll get clumps. Just enough. That's about two tablespoons to a pound and a half of beef. That's more than enough. And then the other thing I always tell people, whatever flour shakes to the bottom of the bowl, leave it there. Don't put it in your sauce or your, or your stew. Just enough to coat them, right? And then with my hand, because we're gonna cook this more, these are just gonna go in like this. You'll see a lot of recipes actually say, you know, shake off the excess flour. And that's really just simply because we don't want to have lumps, right? That's it right here. And you'll see, even though I kind of measured the flour, three tablespoons to a pound and a half, you're going to see at least a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half in the bottom. So that goes in. Just like that. Quite a bit of flour left. We don't need it. All right, so that's done. And then... What I'm going to do here, let me make sure the heat is on. Mine actually goes on a timer. It only goes for five minutes. It's actually a safety feature. So if you start it on sear and you start browning something, for some reason you get called away, it doesn't burn your food. After five minutes, sear turns off. It's not a big deal for me. I just come back and I turn it on. All right? So let's get this tossed. I want to get this meat browning. And then you're going to see something actually amazing. You're going to see a really tough cut of meat. It's actually going to cook in 40 minutes. Two things we're gonna do with our onions. If you buy the fresh pearl onions at the market, you have to peel them, takes a little time, much better flavor. But you can also buy the frozen ones in the freezer section, or I've seen the people use the ones in the jar, but those are cocktail onions and those have been pickled in vinegar. So if you add those to this, you're gonna add a vinegar sharp taste to your stew. I don't recommend it. So either get the fresh ones or buy the frozen ones at the market, much better result. The trick is, if you use frozen ones, add them at the end, because the frozen ones really have already kind of been cooked. They'll absorb the flavor and some of the heat, and they'll be fine. The raw ones should go in now so that you can cook them. We actually have the frozen ones today because we didn't have the pearl onions in season where we are. So those are going to go in at the end. But what I am going to do while my beef is get nice and toasty brown here, we'll let that go for another five minutes. And simply what I'm going to do is before we reveal the one we had to cook earlier, the mushrooms, I like a little texture with them, so I actually just quarter them, okay? See that? Or you could slice them if you want. I have family that like it sliced because the thinner the mushroom, the more it's going to break down and it's, it's actually just going to add texture to the sauce and be a little taste. But I like them quartered because I like a little more rustic when I'm making a stew. I want it to be farmhouse style, country style, right? So just simply quartering. There's no, no real secret here. If you notice, these are just regular button champignon mushrooms, but they're pretty clean It's because I wash them. But I don't soak them in water because mushrooms will absorb water. So basically what we do, we have a little rubber brush, we dip it in cold water, 
we just give them a quick brush and it takes all the soil that they're growing off, okay? That's that simple. And just quarter a bunch of mushrooms while that's simmering away there. Then we're gonna add a little tomato paste. We're gonna add our bouquet garni, which is the herbs. We're gonna hit it with some good burgundy wine. Save a little for me. And then our beef stock that we made here. I'm gonna add a little black pepper, but I'm gonna show you one last trick, very simple. I'm not seasoning my stew now. I'm not seasoning the beef bourguignon right now. I'm gonna put the salt in at the end for a specific reason. I want this to cook under pressure, the meat to absorb all that amazing flavor from the beef stock and the red wine, and then I'll adjust the salt flavor later. Okay, that simple. We have a wonderful sous chef that works here that loves beef bourguignon served with toasted sourdough, and I think that's how we're gonna serve it. So she can have the sourdough, the chef can have a glass of burgundy, and we're all gonna have some beef bourguignon. So right now what I'm gonna do is very simple. Beef is browning up nice right in here. You can see it, it's sticking. We're getting some really good color. We gotta let that go. Now we get some tomato paste in. And again, that's a personal preference because I believe it adds body to the sauce, right? We wanna make sure the tomato sauce, tomato paste rather, evenly distributed. Okay, I can actually start smelling the garlic because remember I chopped it up and released its oil, okay? So very simple there. That can go away. Any scraps again in your compost, okay guys? So bouquet garni goes in. Now I'm gonna hit a little red wine. That's about a cup and a half of good red wine. And I've got two cups of homemade beef stock, but there's nothing wrong if you buy good quality beef stock at the market, just make sure it has a low sodium and it's all natural. Just read the ingredients. There's no preservatives in there, it's fine to buy. If not, get some bones from your butcher, a pot and some cold water, make your own stock. It's a fun thing to do. And in goes the stock. And that's that, very simple. Let's add some mushrooms. Let me give this a stir real quick. It already looks beautiful. This just says home to me. This stew always says home. Really one of the first dishes I learned in cooking school 30 years ago because most of what they taught us was based on classic French cuisine, which this is. These mushrooms are gonna simmer in there. They're gonna come out amazing. Again, my onions go in at the end because these were frozen ones. But next time we show you this dish, we'll do fresh ones so you can show you a little trick on how to peel them. All right, a little stir. Get everybody hanging out in the pool together. This is gonna be beautiful. Now, let's go back to the simple fact I showed you before. One of the reasons I love the NutriPot Hours, not just because I work here, but because look how easy the lid goes on. That's it. Comes off, gives you freedom to work. Oh, here's the other reason. After the stew is cooked, when we come back and I show you, here's a little trick. You can order this separate, I think. I can turn this NutriPot pressure cooker into a slow cooker, or even more importantly, a warming vessel. I can actually set this to warm, so my kid comes home from school, hey, what'd you have? Oh, Dad, we have some stew. It's beautiful. This, this is a really good little thing. It literally turns a pressure cooker into a slow cooker. So now I got two appliances in one. But again, let me show you how easy the lid goes on. Slides on the hinge. Sherlock system, we know it's safe, especially if the kid's around. We lock it, and here what I'm gonna do is set it on meat, which actually says meat and stew. If you read that, it's kind of small. Hit it on go. Hit start, it's preheating, and then it's gonna go. Now when we come back, I'm gonna show you the finished dish. It should be about 40 minutes in here. We'll break apart some of the meat, show you how tender. We're gonna plate it up with some toasted country bread and a glass of wine. We'll see you when we come back. All right, welcome back everybody. Chef David here at the New Wave Kitchen. Welcome back to our cooking club. Let's finish our fantastic beef bourguignon, our beef in burgundy wine. First thing I'm gonna do, let's turn the unit off. And what I love about our NutriPot is many of the old ones you had to sit and hold the button to get the steam out. This one we have a lock where you push it and it stays open. If you want to turn it off, hit the button. Turn it on. Now I can walk away and do other stuff while this is releasing. So two ways to release on a pressure cooker, an electric pressure cooker, is we can release the valve, which we just did, or we can do a natural release, which we just turn the unit off and let it naturally release the pressure on its own. It takes quite a long time, but many recipes actually call for a natural release. So look that up for yourselves tonight. Uh, we're gonna release ours quick because we're hungry. Uh, so a couple of things, uh, my lovely sous chef, she toasted up some beautiful sourdough. Uh, she doesn't like this, but I do. I have to have butter on my sourdough. I don't know about you guys, so I'll show you why I like to do it. This is not traditional how they do this in France. 
with beef bourguignon, but this is how I do it at the New Wave Kitchen, so hopefully you don't mind. I like a buttered piece of sourdough right in the bottom. That's what I do. Okay, the other thing I like is fresh parsley on mine. So let me grab my knife. And what I like actually is some really good, beautiful fresh parsley. I just want the leaves. Make a mess if you have to, it's okay. And I don't really finely chop my parsley for many dishes actually. A lot of chefs, they sit here all day going crazy with the parsley. It's a waste of time, right? I want to see the herbs. Herbs are very good for you, they're healthy. We're learning more and more about herbs and stuff like that every day. So just get a good rough chop like this. Okay, and that's it. So now a couple more components, a little more black pepper, not too much because I already put black pepper in. My sea salt, my pearl onions, and the most important one, a little burgundy wine that we saved from cooking, still really good wine. We'll splash a little on the counter, we'll put some in a glass. Now you can see this one on the natural release is letting the steam out. Always make sure on an electric pressure cooker, whether it's new waves, I don't know, you leave the pressure all the way out before you try to open the lid. Now ours has a Surelock safety system. There's actually seven safety features on this. One of the safest on the market. Uh, and that's why I don't mind using that home around my kids and stuff. It's, 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 I'm very, very proud to be part of this, this one here. So we let all the steam out. We're gonna add this to our sourdough. Here we go. And that's it. You hear the noise? That means it's safe to open. Opens up. Now, you can still see this stew simmering. Look at this, 40 minutes, guys. Let me do two things here real quick for you. So the first one, right? Hopefully you can see this at home. Watch this. Look at this. That was only 40 minutes, and that was a tough, tough cut of meat. And it's literally soft as butter. That was amazing. Wow. Two more things I like. I can take this lid off, put it on the side. Now, my kid's coming home. I put the lid on. All I do is set it for warm, turn it on, and it stays warm for hours, just like a slow cooker, okay? The other thing we have, this is our nonstick insert, but we're also gonna have, uh, soon to be available for you, a stainless steel insert. Many people like cooking in stainless steel for health reasons. Our nonstick is amazingly safe, doesn't have the PTFOE, doesn't have the PFOA. We took all that stuff out. Okay, that's enough talk. Now it's time for beef bourguignon and some red wine. Look at the gravy on this, guys. Let me just put it in a, so again, this was the red wine, beef stock, a little flour from tossing the beef, and the tomato paste. And look what this did. Can you guys see that? Let me put a little bit in I'll take my beautiful bread out first. But look at this. Look at the texture of the sauce. It's not too thin, but I don't want a thick, gloppy sauce. I want something light, even though this is a stew. Beautiful. Look at this. Right on top of my sourdough. That meat is so tender. And guys, honest to God, 40 minutes. That's what it took me. I get a little more juice over my bread. And then if I want, I can garnish it a little bit more with some more bread. And of course, the parsley over the top. A little more black pepper, right? And now I do my sea salt. All right, I didn't want my stew cooking with the sea salt. It's really a personal preference, but I recommend you try it at least and see. So glass of red wine, guys. I'll clean up the mess. You guys have beef bourguignon. Chef David, the New Wave Cooking Club. Come see us again soon.